Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Microsoft Purview Information Protection Ninja Training. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Emily Blundo, and I am part of our Microsoft Purview MIP and DLP product team. During this short video, I'll be doing a brief introduction to data loss prevention and our Purview portal experience. To get started, I'm going to navigate to DLP on the left-hand side, which is a little bit lower here. Here is data loss prevention. Here you'll see a brief overview of the top activities going on in your tenant, as well as some information around your data loss prevention policies. When you first get started within DLP, you'll want to go to the policies tab, which is the next tab over here. To create your first policy, we simply click Create Policy. Here you'll have the option of DLP templates to start with. These templates are here to help you get started and comply with certain regulations. For instance, in the Enhanced section, you can choose HIPAA, which is right here. This will detect the presence of information subject to US HIPAA. This enhanced template extends the original HIPAA template by also detecting people's full names, medical terms and conditions, and US physical addresses. We also have enhanced the template with trainable classifier business healthcare, which detects healthcare and medical content in your tenant, like medical records, health benefit documents, insurance forms, etc. For this demo, I will choose a custom policy. Next, you're going to go ahead and name your policy. I will just name it custom policy one, two, three. And then we'll choose the locations we want to apply this policy to. You have the options of Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, Devices, which is going to be Endpoint DLP, Defender for Cloud Apps, On-Prem Repositories, and Power BI, which is in preview. Keep in mind that the more locations you choose, the less options you have, because it's gonna be the common options or conditions between all of the locations that you selected. So for instance, if I just choose exchange and click next, for conditions, you can see that I have many different conditions to choose from. See this long list here. Then if I go ahead and cancel and I go back. And then if I also select SharePoint, my options are going to be narrowed down significantly. So click on create a rule. See my list of conditions has really gone down. So when you choose your location, you'll then create a DLP rule, which is what we're creating here. I'll just name it rule and this is a rule to be matched against your policy two three just in case so after we give it a name we choose the conditions which we can see here are the options so we can say the content contains and within content contains you can choose sensor information types sensitivity labels trainable classifiers get rid of this here we can see the other conditions so if the content shared from m365 you can match against this dlp policy there's a certain file extension etc there are a lot of options to choose from so just for this use case i will say content contains and we will just choose social security number Okay, so after that, you're going to go ahead and choose the actions for when that rule is matched. In this case, we have the option of restricting access or encrypting the content. So you can block users from receiving mail or accessing files if it contains social security numbers, and you can block everyone or block only people outside of your organization. For this use case, I'll just choose to block only people outside of my organization. If we don't choose an action, we'll just be auditing when we see those um, files or emails with social security numbers. Below the actions, we can turn on or off user notifications. 
and you can see we have the option of giving users a policy tip. We can also email the users if we are detecting that they're using social security numbers and it's matching against this DLP policy. Below that, you can choose to allow or disallow overrides when the DLP rule is matched. So if we turn this on, you'd be allowing the override and you can require a business justification to override or just override automatically if they report it as false positive. So then below this, you can see the incident reports. You can also choose to turn on alerts to the admin when the rule is matched. So to break this down a little bit, here's the option where you choose the severity of the report that you're sending to admin, and then you can choose to send the alert to admin, you can send an email, and you can even choose to send an alert every time an activity matches, or you can choose certain amounts of time or conditions for when you do send that alert. And then lastly here at the bottom, we can see an option for if there is a match, you can choose to stop looking for other DLP policies that will match. And you can also set the priority of this rule. And that priority decides which rules are evaluated first. So I'm just gonna leave that as default for now and I'm gonna click save. Choose send an alert every time the activity matches, then we can click save. And then we can click next. So next we decide if we want to test this policy first, which is always a good idea before turning the policy on, or you can just turn it on right away. You can also just leave it off for now. So I will say test it out first, and you click next, and then you would just click submit. Once you've created your DLP policies and turned on alerts, when those policies match, then you'll start to see alerts flowing into the alerts tab next to policies. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Here within the alerts tab, you can filter on the time range, the user who was part of the alert, the alert status or its severity. If we click on alert, we're able to see a pop out with the details on what occurred. So I'll go ahead and show you an example. So we'll just click on this first one here. Let it load up for a second. Okay, so we can see just based off of this little pop out that there was a certain DLP policy that was matched and that was for blocking files labeled as confidential. We can see the location where this DLP policy matched that was SharePoint and the users who performed the event. So that was myself. So now we can go in to click on view details for more information. When we first go into the details, you can see an overview of the alert, the policy matches, the rule it matched on, what sensitive information types may have been involved. There's much more information here. So if we click on events, you can see the different events that make up this alert. We can look at the details and the metadata for alerts that contain the sensitive information types, and we can see the classifiers it matched all within these different tabs. So just within details quickly, you can see the location, the time of the activity. Um, we can see who last modified that file, where that file path is located. We can see the policy details, if there were certain sensitive information types detected. And if there were sensitive information types detected, then we could go to this classifiers tab to see them. Um, just for another example, we can go into metadata and see all of the information here. And like I said, if there were sensitive information types detected in this document, not only would you see that in the classifiers tab, but you would see that in the metadata as well. It's a list here. So I'm gonna go back to data loss prevention for now, and we're going to move over next to the alert tabs into the endpoint DLP settings. So here's where you configure settings that apply to all existing and new endpoint DLP policies that protect content on Windows and Mac OS devices. Advanced classification is going to be the first one. 
So when advanced classification is on, it allows M365 cloud-based classification service to scan and classify items and then return the results to the local devices. If this is on, you do get to take advantage of advanced classification techniques like EDM and named entities. Below that, we have the file path exclusions. These are file paths to be excluded from being monitored by your policies on Windows and then for Mac OS devices as well. So below that is restricted apps and app groups. With this, you can control the level of access that specific apps have to the sensitive content detected in your DLP policies. You have the option to either create groups of apps to enforce different access restrictions for each app, or you can add apps individually to one list to apply the same restrictions to them all. Moving below, you're also able to add a list of unallowed Bluetooth apps. After that, we have browser and domain restrictions. Here you can block certain browsers or domains from accessing sensitive files. You can also configure sensitive service domains that contain sensitive information to protect risky browser activity like saving, printing, or copying data from that specific service domain. Below for additional settings for endpoint DLP, you can set up custom business justification drop-down menu if users need to override certain activities. And last, you can choose to turn on always audit file activities for devices. By default, when devices are onboarded, their activity is audited and you can see it in Activity Explorer. If you do turn this off, it would only be when they're in an active policy that they would be audited. So these are all of your settings to get started with data loss prevention. I hope this is really helpful for you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Ninja training. Have a nice day. Thank you.